Hey, dude, YouTube, time for another beer review. Just got done reviewing the uh, Paul Liner Saboteur and decided to review uh, just other crap I got in my fridge. But what I got here is not crap. What I got here is a fine Belgian wheat ale. Blue Moon. Now, of course, a, a, a beer of this pedigree must be made in a fine city in Belgium. Well, it is. It's made by the Blue Moon Brewing Company in Golden, Colorado. I don't know what it is about Colorado breweries just wanting to be Belgium or Belgian. We got this and then we also got Fat Tire. I mean, I don't understand it. But yeah, I mean, most of you already know, yeah, Blue Moon, it's a Miller Coors product. Some people who are not, or who don't follow beer, or obsess over beer, you know, the folks who drink it and don't think it, some of them might still fall for the fact of, Oh, this is a Belgian wheat beer, and I dropped the top. Anyway, it's a Belgian wheat beer. It must be made in Belgium. No, it's just, it's just uh, another example of uh, mass-produced, you know, huge breweries trying to disguise themselves as, you know, being trendy and hip when it comes to craft beer drinkers. And I say trendy and hip, but I mean, this has been going on for at least 10 years. I mean, you got Blue Moon, Anheuser-Busch has Shock Top, Anheuser-Busch is, you know, buying like Goose Island and hell, Coors even is a uh, owner of a local brewery here in Georgia, um, Terrapin Brewing Company. So yeah, before these big breweries started buying into craft beer breweries, they tried to mimic craft brew. And like I said, one of the early examples, Blue Moon Belgian White is a Belgian style weed ale. 5.4% alcohol by volume. I'm not sure of the IBUs, but I believe the calories are 168-ish. It's not light beer, but honestly, compared to a lot of these, a lot of uh, beer that I drink at least, not too bad on the calorie chart. Hell, that Saboteur just had like 240. So by comparison, fuck it, it's a light beer. Anyway. The color is poor for the course of style. I'm not a wheat beer expert or specialist by no means. I don't drink a whole lot of them. I will get a Konig Ludwig, uh, uh, oh, Hefervazen every once in a while, excuse me. But wheat beer isn't really my go-to style. Don't really have nothing against it. Just, I got styles I prefer over it. But like I said, the, the color is poor for the course. Uh, just a very, like a yellowish orange, Definitely opaque, can't see through this at all. I tell you what, there's some porters out here that wish they were this hard to see through. Very, very, very hazy. Let's go ahead and take a whip. As you can see, the uh, little bit of head we had dissipated quite quickly, although I didn't pour it aggressively. Smell-wise. Um, I also get it with the Fat Tire, which is, like I said, uh, another Colorado-based brewing company that tries to disguise himself as being Belgian, but uh, a little bit of a bubblegum note, which I'm not a fan of bubblegum, but yeah, I get bubblegum and like a hint of banana. Overall, I mean, if you told me years ago that people made beer with wheat and it would somehow taste like banana or smell like banana and bubblegum, I'd be like, well, that makes no sense, but I've noticed this with a lot of wheat beers you get banana you get bubble gum that's just how it goes but other than that it's pretty light on the nose those two notes are about all you get and they're really not that heavy at all so let's see how she tastes um if you're not used to other styles of beer if you're just someone say if you're a coors connoisseur and someone tells you well blue moon's made by coors you just try it this will be this would be different. Um, not only is it made with wheat, but also Valencia orange peel and coriander. Like a lot of uh, Belgian wheat beers, coriander and orange peels are added. And um, you can get the citrusy note. Definitely get the citrus. You get a little bit of um, that Christmas tree kind of like a um, uh, like a, a pine needle note from the coriander. I'm pretty sure it's what they put in Jen's coriander. 
I want to say. And you know how Jin Kent is at Christmas trees, at least I think so. And this is somewhat similar. You got, the, like I said, that spice note, a little bit of a pineus, um, a little bit of banana. Uh, the bubblegum note I got on the nose, which is the most prominent thing on the nose, though. However, in when it comes to flavor, it kind of disappears. But yeah, you can definitely tell that there is orange peel in this. That's very pronounced. Along with, like I said, spice. Maybe even like an allspice note. Like, kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, some people make, like, mold wine and stuff like that for Christmas. And they put cloves and stuff. They'll, you know, take an orange and put cloves in it. That's kind of, sort of what I'm getting. Although, I will say, even though the flavors are different than what you'd expect from a Coors product or a Miller product, it's not heavy. It, this is very approachable for someone and, and, you know, who isn't used to drinking different styles of beer. And that's pretty much what it's made for. I can see, but Blue Moon's made for somebody who has outgrown drinking Coors Light by the suitcases and wants something a little different, a little more complex. But it's still very approachable to your mass market beer drinker it's it's a it's a beer it still tastes similar to beer but with a little bit of a twist if you're someone who drink who just loves wheat beers you'll drink this and you'll be very disappointed you'll go it's lacking in flavor it's subdued um the mouth feels a little watery for my taste but if you're someone who just likes trying different beer who wants to explore beer someone who isn't like i said used to drinking different styles you try this go huh that's pretty neat didn't know beer tasted like that well like i said although on the other side you have your craft beer connoisseurs or snobs no matter i mean depending on how you look at it they'll drink this and go and it still tastes like fizzy fucking water but when it comes to me, I enjoy it. Uh, Blue Moon is a good beer, I would say. There's no off notes. I don't. There's nothing here that's repulsing me. I'm drinking this and going, you know, my thirst is quenched, and I mean, I'm enjoying it. Are there better wheat beers out there? Yes, yes, there is. Like I said, uh, my go-to is probably Konig Ludwig. Although, like I said. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, um, wheat beer is not really my style. But like I said, I'll get a six pack of Conig Ludwig every once in a while. And at the same time, I will get a six pack of Blue Moon every once in a while. If I just like, if I go to a gas station, I don't want Miller Lite. I'm not in the mood for Coors Banquet. Uh, no, nah, I don't even want malt liquor. I had. Yingling at the restaurant the other day. Oh, Blue Moon ain't had that in a couple months. I mean, it's it's solid. It's a solid, good, drinkable beer. Mouthfield is a little light, a little watery. I think there might be a little sediment in there. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit of sediment in the bottom of that bottle. So yeah, if you're a craft beer connoisseur or snob, don't buy it. You're gonna, even if you enjoy it, you'll probably find some snide comment of why it's lacking or why I've had this before and I wasn't impressed. Which I think a lot of craft beer drinkers are just people trying to blend into a social group and they use their hobby of beer to try to make themselves seem more interesting or cool, you know? Like, I admit, I'm a little bit of a snob myself. If uh, if someone comes at me with a can of Bud Light, I might be like, mm. but I'll suck it up and I'll drink it if that's the social situation I'm in where it's acceptable to drink Bud Light. Yeah, maybe I'm trying to blend in a little bit too. Now that I, now that I hear myself say it, I'm like, oh, you're a little bit of a hypocrite there. But... The fact is, uh, what I'm trying to get to is that if you're someone who enjoys beer, you shouldn't be putting all kinds of beer down just because it's not um, 
in style or your friends look at you and go, why do you drink that crap? Like I got friends who drink, my best friend chugs Miller Lite by the gallon. He'll make fun of me sometimes because I'm like, oh, you need to try this. Like, oh, it tastes like shit. I don't know why you drink that stuff. Oh, it tastes like shit. Miller Lite's the best beer ever. You know, I don't look down for him. I don't look down at him for it. In, in fact, I'm a little bit envious of him because a case of Miller Lite is a lot cheaper than the bunch of, than a whole bunch of stuff I buy. So it is what it is. But he's enjoying it, and I'm enjoying this. And I also enjoy more complex beers, but middle of summertime, give me a natty light. I'm thirsty. Anyway, back to this. I That was a huge, uh, I, I digressed. Anyway, what am I going to rate this? Well, for what it is, a entry-level um, Belgian wheat ale, seven and a half. It's chuggable. It's tasty. Uh, there's no off notes. Is it going to impress you? No, but it's also available in just about every um, gas station around, every liquor store, most restaurants. If it's a beer you enjoy, you won't have trouble getting it. And like if you go to a restaurant and have a bunch of crap that you're like, I don't want none of that, um, Blue Moon. It's similar to when I go to a restaurant, Blue Moon's one I get, um, Yingling. Like you go, if you go to any kind of... Uh, a franchise, you know, sit down eating place like a, an Olive Garden, a Texas Roadhouse, a Longhorns. Normally my first go-to for those places as far as beer is I'll get a Sam Adams. If they don't have that, I'll get a Yingling. If they don't have that, Blue Moon's a close third. If they don't have that, they've got to have Miller Lite. If they don't have that, then I guess I'm drinking margaritas all night. Anyway, seven and a half out of ten. a solid entry-level introduction to the style of Belgian white ales. Like, rate, and subscribe to Care If you don't, eh, I'll get over it. Uh, spade new to your animals. But before that, you know, go ahead, give it some thought, and go kill your local pedophile. And then once you're done with that, you can sleep soundly. You can have a good night and a pleasant tomorrow.